This episode of the Good Living Now podcast is sponsored by our friends at Kuvings. Now, I've had almost every brand of juicer on the market since I started my healing journey in 2015, but the Kuvings Auto 10 has been a complete game changer. It's easy to use and easy to clean. Plus, I'm able to make smoothies as well as sorbets and plant-based milk. So use my code JUICEGUY and save 10%. All right, you know what to do. Get your juice on. So I wanted to have this conversation with Dr. Gazana. It's good. Gazana. Gazana, you know. South African flower? Come on now. All right now. (laughs) But I wanted to have a a doctor come on because sometimes you just need to hear from somebody that got something behind their names. You don't want to hear nothing from Harold. Just want to hear somebody that has some credentials, you know, that got some education. It is funny because she was just telling me that one of her first jobs. So I was 17 years old and I did a Chevy Training Academy and you were part partnership with them. And so you also trained us on like job interviews and I had my first job through your agency. So I'm like, wait a wow. minute, when I saw your name, like that name is so familiar. Yes. And I'm just real old. I'm like, she used to work for my agency. I'm just, I'm like, go ahead and make a brother just feel real, real old. <laughs> And so, where did you work at? Do you remember where we were at? I worked at a car, a collaborating agency responding to disasters. Oh, wow. And it was, it, it paid a lot of money back then. I was making nine twenty five an hour. Come on now. Come on yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted to have you here. And thank you so much for accepting the invitation. I really appreciate it. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about, you know, 70% of all American adults are on prescription medication. Mm-hmm. And so many people are suffering with things, particularly in the African-American community, like diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and high blood pressure. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what should people be doing to, number one, stay healthy, and if they are facing some type of health challenge, what should they be doing? That type 2 diabetes is basically what I specialize in mm-hmm. as a doctor of acupuncture and innovative medicine. I used to teach diabetes education classes for like two years. What motivated me is my own family history. My mom passed away of complications from diabetes, so I'm definitely an advocate of helping people with diabetes. 80% of people in my own private practice, I treat people who have type two diabetes. Mm. And so, in a lot of patients, they have, of course, their MDs, and they just push medications. You gotta know the complication comes along. But a lot of patients who work with me start to reduce their medication, either get off the medications, their eyes get bright and clearer, they get more, you know, more motivated with life and making changes. Mm-hmm. And so when you contacted me and talked about juicing and then you're having someone speaking of a um, plant-based diet, mm-hmm. that is what I advocate for with my patients mm. and, and taking them on this journey. And then also with acupuncture and integrative medicine, which spe- what makes it very special is that it's unique for each patient. Right. So when I see an individual it's not just about what medication they're on or what herbs I can give them, but then also, like you mentioned, it's a holistic approach of what is causing this person stress. Mm-hmm. What is this person holding on to? And it's a lot of emotional stuff too, and, and things like that. So, yeah. Wow. One of the things that I learned last week when I was in Atlanta for the Juicy for Health tour, a lot of women deal with things like fibroids. Mm-hmm. And my mother had fibroids. And I remember she had a hysterectomy, and after she had the hysterectomy, she was never the same. And the doctors told us she was going through a depression because of the hysterectomy, the hormonal changes. So they started giving her, you know, antidepressant. And they didn't realize that she was having strokes and that her change in behavior and her depression, loss of memory, all of that was a stroke, but they thought it was depression. And what I've learned last week was that women who have a hysterectomy have a 24% higher risk of stroke than people who don't. And I know my mama didn't know that. Mm -hmm. And talk a a little bit about, you know, fibroids and kind of what causes them and what are some things that women can do to? Well, with fibroids, it's really big in especially the African-American community. But from a, a Chinese medicine perspective, a lot of it is our diet. 
Mm. A lot of it is fatty, greasy foods, fried foods, and then also a connection with our emotions, suppressed emotions. Mm. So patients that I see who have fibroids, I, I, I get them on some custom made herbs, like tailored to their concern. And then also dietary changes is absolutely necessary mm -hmm. um, with reducing fatty foods. And then also with uh, their emotions, that's a whole nother uh, thing. Mm. So I always recommend speaking with a the therapist, um, journaling at least three times a week. Yeah, so a lot of um, women, and particularly certain types of women in the communities, I've been through a whole bunch in their life, and they're always told to be strong and not, you know, see a therapist or express themselves. So that's a lot of key factors with fibroids. Mm. But then also doctors are really quick to take people's uteruses out and right. just quick to make these drastic changes. Mm. And then that also, like you said, it affects your whole system. Right. It affects your mental health. It affects your, all your, your neurotransmitters in your body and whatnot. But the, the first approach should be the holistic approach instead of just snatching stuff out. Right, yes. right, right. And, and so you mentioned stress and, and therapy. I had to give me some therapy. Because, <laughs> I bet, I bet. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had to give me some therapy. <laughs> But I didn't want people to think I was crazy because, you know, in the black community, you go to the therapist and folks think you're crazy. No, I'm just trying to get healed, you know. And I remember my second therapist. I, I didn't realize I was traumatized by childhood. And she had me, one of the exercises she had me do was write a letter to both my mom and dad. And... I'm in the therapy session just crying and boo-hooing, and you know how you get that cry where you're like, <laughs> I'm like, what in the heck is wrong with me? What is, what, what, what how? And I, I couldn't even get my, my, my words together. But I think so often we are used to just living a life full of stress that we don't know that we're holding and carrying that around, and we don't realize how that is hindering our lives and, 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 hindering our ability to heal because we are suppressing so much that, and sometimes, you know, it was a survival thing. We had to, you can't, you can't grow up in the hood and be showing your emotions. Somebody hurt your feelings and cry, you're going to get beat up, you know? And so talk a little bit about, you know, stress and how that impacts our health mm. and healing. Yeah, stress is actually, you could just say it's the number one thing as far as causing illnesses because stress weakens our immune system. Stress affects our cardiovascular system. Stress affects our sleep. And so these are the main things that we need. Sleep, we need cardiovascular health, mental health. And the thing about also what I do with acupuncture, when I use certain points on certain people, sometimes they can just start crying in the middle of a session. Mm. They can um, start laughing in the middle of a session. I'm like, are you okay? And the, the things come up. So basically they're just releasing. They're allowing the needles that I'm using and the body is just opening up and sometimes you hide these emotions and feelings in certain in Chinese medicine, certain aspects of your body. And mm. so when you're releasing them, they come up. And mm. so, yeah, that, would that answer your question? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, in the speaking of the, the Ch Chinese, in the Chinese language, the word crisis has two meanings. One meaning danger, and the other one meaning an opportunity. Sometimes when we're faced with a uh, crisis, we only look at the danger part of it and not the opportunity to make changes that will impact our, our health and well-being. And I know when I was going through my whole cancer experience, sometimes the pain would be so intense. I remember I would go into my bathroom and I would put a towel in there so my son wouldn't hear me screaming because I was in so much pain. And sometimes you just didn't, sometimes you just didn't want to wake up, to, you know. I don't know if I wanted to leave, but I just didn't want to deal with the pain, you know. And a lot of times when people are going through a cancer experience, people don't know how to support you and show up for you. And sometimes you don't know, not sometimes, most times you don't even know how you want them because your, your emotions are all over the place. You know, you'd be mad at people because they ain't checking on you. Then you'd be irritated because they are checking on you. You do, It's just like, what am I supposed to do here? What am I supposed to do? So people like who are going through a cancer experience and maybe doing all, you know, all of the treatments, what are some things that they can be doing to help them on their healing journey? 
That's interesting that you say this because for the past year, I volunteer at a place here in Oakland. It's called Charlotte Maxwell, but they offer free services to women who have cancer. And mm-hmm. I work with basically those women who are in palliative care or, you know, close to dying. And so when they go through the system, of course, the medical system, Western medical system, like you said, they have radiation, chemo, all these doctor's appointments. So that's to attack the cancer, right? And then they come back to us to, to be put back together because they're totally, basically, the chemicals just destroyed their body and their mind. And so what things that they do is, like you said, feeding yourself nutrition, juicing. Now, that's what we recommend them to do, a lot of fruits and vegetables. And they're thriving from that, thriving, thriving from the nutrition. Yeah. And then also we prescribe them herbs too. So like mm-hmm. I know you have ashwagandha mm-hmm. and Chinese medicine we use a lot of warm cheese, the same kind of thing, but it helps with the immune system. It helps with right. your energy and your stamina. So things like that. And then also like massage and like meditation mm-hmm. and just really supporting those who have had cancer or going through this journey, supporting them in their healthy journey. Mm-hmm. And so I've saw a lot of patients there thrive and, and actually live past, mm-hmm. live past the diagnosis because of the proper nutrition and also the integrative medicine with like massage and acupuncture and herbs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. yeah. You know, I, I had posted something a while ago and I said that, I remember growing up as a kid, I used to hear, you know, family members talk about the fact that, you know, certain diseases ran in our family. You say, oh yeah, sh-. back in the day we say sugar. Sugar runs in our family. They didn't call it diet type. I know, I'm like, what's sugar? But you know, sugar runs in our family and high blood pressure runs in our family. And I, what I say to that, it's the habits that lead to disease that run in our families. If we're eating the same types of foods and consuming the same diet and dealing or not dealing with stress the same way, of course, there's a likelihood we're going to have the similar outcomes. What do you say to that? Absolutely right. I know someone says something like diabetes doesn't run in your family just because your family doesn't run. Mm. You know, it's, mm. like you said, you have to make the changes. So when you go out with your family, you see all the food that they're eating. And then you say, oh, auntie has this, grandpa has this, cousin has that. Well, you have to change the way you eat, like Tupac said, right? You have to like change how you eat to change your outcome. And so that's um, what Tupac said. Yeah, he did. What did he say again? <laughs> say what did, he, what did he say again? What I don't say? know exactly the words, but y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what, 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 in order what, what, to change your, your mind and your outlook in life, you have to change what we put in our mouth, within our mouth. Like you said, change okay. your food. Okay. Okay. And so, so it's not like what runs in your family. Change your habits, and then yeah. encourage your other family members to start exercising with you, juicing with you. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, yeah. I love what you're doing. Love oh, it. thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And. I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about high blood pressure, because that's a big thing. And some people say that type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure are cousins. Like if you have type 2 diabetes, you like to have high blood, high blood pressure, pressure and high cholesterol. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So if you have like type 2 diabetes, it's like an ABC rule, your A1C, blood pressure, and your cholesterol. So this is something that you need to watch. But basically, all of that is inflammation. Mm. It's inflammation. And how we reduce inflammation, doctor? Go ahead and tell. <laughs> tell them, tell them. Well, okay. <laughs> so, of course, exercising, moving, even if it's 30 minutes a day, walking, whatever, whatever, whatever brings you joy. And I always say a joyful heart is good medicine. So whatever brings you joy. And then also increasing your nutrients, your food, and exactly what he's advocating today, juicing. And then also with like herbs, like I know ashwagandha, that helps with your immune system, ginger, turmeric, and then stuff like for blood pressure, hearthworm berries, things like a lot of things like that. But then also people can be doing, patients could be doing everything right. And I'm like, well, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Your mental health, what's going on in your life, your relationships are toxic. Now that's something else you gotta work on with your therapist, but in general, like, you, you can just be doing everything right, but you have toxic relationships in your life. I, I had a young lady on my podcast who had cancer and was in a toxic relationship. And she ended that relationship. She ain't got cancer no more. I don't know what, I don't know how that happened, but she, she, she ain't got cancer no more. So, I, you know, I, I don't know what, I don't know, I don't know what, what happened. But another thing that I've learned 
is the importance of vitamin D. And most people of color are vitamin D deficient. Mm -hmm. And so you can be eating all the right things and getting all the, the, the nutrition in. But if your vitamin D level is low, that's going to affect your body's ability to absorb those nutrients. Mm -hmm. Is that right or am I just making that up? No, that's right. That's right. Okay. You can't just lay out in the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so most people should be probably taking a, a vitamin D supplement that gets their blood work just to see. Because I don't think a lot of times that's a natural thing that it happens when you go to the doctor that they're checking your vitamin D levels. So sometimes you have to ask for that, right? Oh, absolutely. And you have to make sure you have the right doctor. Because mm. sometimes the doctors are not on your team or sometimes doctors will be like, oh, you're going to be on medication. Blah, mm. No, you need somebody who believes in you and on your team. I'll always say that a, a doctor is part of your team. You're not part of their team. Right. So you need to kind of like have that conversation. And if it's not working, then you need to fire them. Come, come on now. You need to fire them. If it ain't working for you, you need to fire them. And sometimes we get so scared because we put doctors on this pedestal like they some kind of superhuman beings. And they just folks just like you and I. And the medical business is a business. And we become their customers. And my intention is to help us not be so they can have fewer customers. That's, that's my intention. <laughs> because they, they're making too much money off of our pain. And one of the things I have discovered, speaking of pain, is the importance of listening to our bodies, yeah. right? Because pain is information. And sometimes we ignore the pain going on in our body. Sometimes we ignore the pain going on in our finances. Look, if you're looking at your bank account, it's giving you pain. That's information, <laughs> baby. That's information. That's like, oh, I need to do something different, yeah. you know? And, but sometimes we're so used to ignoring the pain. I remember when I used to eat dairy. Every time I would eat dairy, I would always feel like I was getting a cold and I ate dairy every day. And I didn't mind it because I liked the way it tastes. But that's my body giving me feedback. And so often we ignore the feedback that our body is giving us. Can you talk a little bit about that, doctor? That's good that you bring that up too because a lot of people say, well, what am I supposed to eat? There are different diets or whatnot. And I always just say, Pay attention to what you're eating. How do you feel after you eat? And if you don't feel good, then you need to stop eating it. What if you feel sleepy? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you feel sleepy and you're not supposed to be feeling sleepy in the, 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 you know, the beginning of the day, then that's not a good thing for you. Because we call it dietis. You know, you eat that heavy <laughs> stuff with all that stuff in it. Like, oh, I got the itis. Maybe your body's giving you feedback like, I should not have eaten all of this. Yeah, and in a journey to health, you really start to be more aware of your body. Yeah. And, and like what feels good and what does not. And that goes across all lines. Mm -hmm. That's with people also. If you're like you said earlier, your circle. Mm -hmm. Are they feeding into are you thriving or are you, you know, getting way back, way down or stressed? You shouldn't mm -hmm. be feeling like that. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was going through my whole cancer experience, I had some friends, we had gone out. I had ordered like some salad, a salad and, and water. And they're like, that's, that's, how? Well, huh? well, they having steak and all this other stuff. And I was like, well, until you've been through what I've been through, I, I, I'm trying to heal my body, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes people, they don't understand because they've never been there. And they don't understand how dr necessary change is. But here's what I know change is possible it really is it's really possible and healing is possible but we just have to first believe it and then we have to take those those baby steps i ain't saying you're gonna be perfect as you're on this you know you ain't gonna be perfect like my son he on this one day he a pescatarian next day he all over the place but at least he's aware and he's aware of the importance of what you put in in your mouth and he pays attention to how, how it makes him feel. And I think that's so important that we pay attention to how the food makes us feel, mm -hmm. you know, how it makes us feel. And also I always, I, I know you advocate for this, farmer's markets, what's in season? Because some like in Chinese medicine, you shouldn't eat certain things in part of the season, but just go to your farmer's market. I feel like the creator has created these things in a certain time frame because it's good for our body.
Come on now. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm an advocate for the farmer's market because at the farmer's market, you see the fruit has stayed on the vine longer or stayed in the ground longer. We don't know where the fruit came from that's in the grocery store, how long it took to get there, what they had to spray on it to keep it, you know, from going bad. So if you do have access to a farmer's market, that's for me is the best place to, to get your, your, your fruits and your vegetables. Yeah. yeah, and it tastes super good. I know for me, I grow uh, collard greens in my backyard. Oh, come on. Did I make, you bring some? I make some good Did you bring some? I make some good collard greens. I got greens. some hot sauce over there. I got some hot <laughs> sauce back there. I'll take a bowl of collard greens. But, but it's so like, you know, it's the difference. Buy it from the store. I, from my backyard, it's richer. Yeah. The green, the green you, I feel so good. It tastes good better. I, yeah. Yes, and the yes. nutrients. It got all them good nutrients. Yeah, we having you dancing. Smoke turkey, though, you know. Uh, yes, smoke turkey. Yeah. Mm. See, because she ain't vegan. She ain't <laughs> vegan. So you look. And, and one of the things I, I say, people uh, try to associate being vegan with being healthy. That is not the case. There, there's a whole lot of stuff that they're putting in so-called vegan food now, a whole bunch of sodium and chemicals. They done, they done messed up the whole thing, but they got vegans thinking that they healthy because, <laughs> oh, I got the name. Oh, I'm vegan. And, 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 and you ain't healthy. You ain't healthy. <laughs> And, and, and I learned that for myself, you know, when I first became vegan, and I never intended to become vegan, I just started taking stuff out of my diet and noticed how I was feeling, and I noticed that I feel better, you know, when I eat plant-based, but I wasn't doing it correctly when I started. Mm -hmm. I was eating these vegan cookies and vegan potato chips, and I'm just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm like, and folks talking about, folks think because you're vegan, you're supposed to be in shape or fit. And, uh, that wasn't my story. I was not looking fit, and, uh, and I realized that I was just doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm more advocate for whole food, plant-based. Mm -hmm. Like some people say I'm eating healthy, and it's always packaged stuff, package, package, right, package, right. package. Right, right. But it's like, Get it fresh from the ground. Right. That's how God made. Just get it fresh from the ground. Yeah. Like make your food from food that comes from the ground, not packaged or looking at all the stay stay in the aisle where there's produce and the fruits and vegetables are. You right. start creeping into the, the processed food out. Mm -mm, get out of there. Right, 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 right. So while we have the doctor on the stage, y'all have any questions? We're gonna take three questions for the doctor before she before she leaves us. Okay, right here. With a lot of patients that have gastric reflux, of course, I tell them to avoid spicy foods and, you know, eating three hours before you don't eat. Stop eating three hours before you go to bed. But then also you can try clove. Yes, clove. After you eat, just like pop a clove, chew it, and it's, it's great for like acid reflux. And it's good for your breath. I have to, I have to use those <laughs> for my breath. Yeah, it's good for your breath. And it's good for stress. It helps Absolutely. to, re yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. You mean like getting cold clove? Yes, yes. You know, when you put in Yes. yes. She said you put in ham. All right now. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> uh, there was another question in the back. You know, they also have like specific tests that specific tests that you can do. To, so did you take a test to see how much your vitamin D, if you're deficient or not? They told me that I was very so deficient that I could be in the hospital. Oh. There is, but that's why also you should work with your, like a practitioner to kind of monitor and like how, what your test results say and then how much you actually should be taking. So that's like a, a more just tethered to you. So I can't tell you like specifically how much is too much for you. What test is it? You said there's a specific test that they can do? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a test for just a D3 test. And you can actually go to like a holistic uh, practitioner and they have access to, like I use Ruba Health and I can test send out lab work um, for if every patient. But yeah, it just depends on who, you, who you're working with. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Last question for the doctor, right? Yeah, we get that a lot. Um, um, people, well, basically juicing helps, like you said, helps your body to um, be free of all like the inflammation, all that, the acid, the acid buildup in your body. Basically it helps to create that environment, a healthy environment. So what he's advocating for and juicing and eating correctly and properly, exercising and all the things helped your body to be basically uh, a, a, a great environment so that cancer will not want to live there. Oh, oh yeah, where people can reach, I forgot. Yeah, where, where you can find the doctor, yes. Well, you can reach me at um, naturallygazania.com. Um, that's my website. My private practice is in San Leandro, California. Naturally Gazania. Naturally, and then my name is Gazania, G-A-Z-A-N-I-A. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>